What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the ZHP Garage. Hope you guys are all having a great day and we are just gonna continue on with the Nova build. So far what we've done off camera, we did a couple things. We torqued the lower pulley bolt to 235 foot-pounds. Pretty dang tight. So we got that torqued on there. The pulley's all ready to go. We got the water pump put on there. Torqued the bolts to 18 foot-pounds. And then we also got the tensioner put on. And right now the master mechanic has been spending quite a bit of time. He is in the mini in the middle of the trunnion upgrade on the rocker arms and he's got all of them done except one of them. So we're going to get with him right now. We're going to see what he's got going on and what it takes to upgrade the trunnions. So, here we go. <laughs> what do you got, man? <laughs> so, I'm doing these trunnions. Um, I'm kind of cheating because I'm using my ball joint press because I don't have my press set up yet I'm gonna get some heat over that. But anyways um, This is the original Trunnion we have and we're upgrading it because you can see that it doesn't have that much movement. They are roller bearing This is one of the old ones. It does have a roller bearing in there um, But the problem is is the travel That if you have too much lift it'll hit so here's one that has a trunnion upgrade in it, and you can see you can go around circles, you know, it's, lift isn't an issue. So this is the last one, so we're going to go ahead and replace this last one, and then we're going to get the valve springs and everything replaced on the on the engine. So this is how we're doing it, kind of cheating, using some sockets. So we're just pressing it out with this. So just set it up, try to get it centered as possible, everything wants to move on you, and then just cram it, cram it out. Yahtzee. These are all the roller bearings from the original. Alright, so then you get your new. Well, first make sure that you don't have nothing in the way. You get your new trunnion. Take the. Put the one side in first. Take it down until it bottoms out. Then you slide through. And press the top one in. So since you're doing this in a kind of a weird way that isn't done by normally. <laughs> I'm doing a very weird way. How is it normally done? You normally do it in a press. You don't have all these crazy contraptions, but. So what does the press look like? Like what? How does it work? Well, see there. Uh, it's a hydraulic press that you crank it down. It's similar, but it doesn't. It it has a ram that cranks it down. Yeah, you don't have all these pieces that are fighting you. Okay, so see there's moving, it comes with these tools, you put it on both sides, and then you, it's supposed to be a stopper, but you gotta be careful, the problem I was having here, even with your little tool, so you run it down, you gotta be careful the tool, it'll do it a little bit tight, and you can't really tell on the video, but by feeling it, you can feel that it's, it's a little tight, and it kind of binds a little bit as it rotates, the tool is kind of over cramping, the outer bearing so I was having to I got to back it off I've been checking each one individually this one you can feel it it rubs a little bit so what I've been doing is just backing it out a little bit so because you want to have you want to, you don't want to tight because you got to have oil get in there to the bearing so the ones that after using the tool if they wind up being too tight then I just back it out a little bit to give it room so it's, it's not binding so I just give it a little it's kind of by feel you just feel it back off a little and what it's pretty much doing is just push is pressing this bottom one out a little bit and now it's nice and smooth but you just want to make sure that you have a little bit of movement but you don't want so much movement that it's going to be hitting on the c-clips once the clips are on so now that I got it right I like it you install the c-clips and what do the c-clips do just it's like insurance. It doesn't really do anything. It, it just makes sure that it's not like holding anything. It just makes sure. But you got to check, rotate it, and make sure that the C-clips are all the way on there. See, that one wasn't on all the way. But when you when you go up and down, you can't really see. It's a really small amount. You want to make sure when it comes down that the C-clip's not hitting the rocker. And you can see it's not. Well, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but 
C-clip's not hitting the rocker, so that's the last one that's installed. You want to have a little bit of room because you got to have oil get in there. If you have it tight so it doesn't move, then it's just bound up. So that's the last one. So you can see we got them all laid out here. So now we're going to change the, uh, the, the springs and everything, the valve seals, the springs, retainers, and locks. And since we already have the head on, we're going to do it, you know, on the engine. So we're going to take the lifters back off. Since the heads are already on, we need to push air into the cylinder to hold the valves up so we're able to push down the valve springs and then to take the locks off. So we're going to just use a leak down tester. So we're going to start right here in the front. So we'll just install the leak down and you kind of do two things at the same time. You can check the, the you know, condition of the engine, the rings and everything, and uh, change the springs. It's going to spin over because the piston is going to push the piston all the way down when it does it, when it fills the cylinder full of air. So depending on where it's at, a bunch of pieces and parts and parts and pieces. So this guy goes on here and bolts down to the where the where the rocker stand would be. And you do two cylinders at the same time. So you just this snug, you're not getting crazy with this. Okay, and then this guy, this is kind of like a lock. So it goes over it and it locks in place, holds the retainers. So then this loop locks in and then it bolts runs runs down to the little the little stand here. So you get the nut close so you're not just turning it for days. Crank it down and sometimes the locks will stick in there so you kind of got to tap them with a hammer or not a hammer a mallet to break them loose because they've been on there so you just tap them to break it loose. Just get a decent amount of threads get the nut so it hits and then crank it down on the nut and then see how they come it's not sticking anymore, coming off the retainers are coming away from the locks. And you just pull out your locks on both cylinders. Didn't go far enough on that one yet. There we go. Oops. Now that we got the locks out, now you just take it back up and take your valve spring off. So you can see that the valve seals on the stock configuration. It's a whole, uh, it acts as the spring seat also, because you don't want everyone a spring to sit on the bare aluminum. So, so this is like a spring seat and the valve seal at the same. All right, so you just want to make sure that it's clean because the new style has this lower, uh, like a shim that the spring sits on. So it's got to go on there first. And then the valve guide holds it centered on there. So you don't have the spring on the aluminum. Then you can put on the valve, um, the valve seals. You just want to put a little grease on the on the guide and the valve. Put this rubber in there. You don't want it to be dry. So just put a small film of grease around the stem, and then put your seal on. Then you just want to use uh, something that fits over, so you don't hit the spring. You just want to catch the outside of it. I just use a socket. And then you just tap it down. All right, then you need your new valve spring. And we did, this is all comp, uh, comp cams, valve train, the cam, well, besides the lifters. So the cam, the push rods, um, the, the valve spring kit, and the trunnion, they are all uh, comp cam. It's the same style, it's a beehive spring. So it's tapered, so the big end goes to the bottom. Then you take, you get a pair of your new retainers, and then the, Guide part goes to the bottom inside the spring. You need this to keep falling over. So you want to get it straight as possible. And you tighten your nut back down. Nice. So then you get your new locks and you can see that when they go together, see they're tapered? It's like a wedge. So as the spring pushes it up, it's pulling tight to the valve. These little grooves here on the valve, and that's what keeps it locked in. So the taper goes to the bottom. So the uh, you gotta get the, the spring squashed down enough so you can get the lock into the valve. But it's kind of tricky because everything's not quite lined up. Kick the spring over a little bit to get everything lined up. And you can see that they go 
Please circle around the valve. If it's down a little bit, once you bring it up, the, the, the retainer will pull suck it up and lock it. Okay, now that they're in there, you loosen up your nut and let the spring come back up. You can see that it comes right in. The retainer pulls it in, straightens everything out, straightens the lock out, and there you go. Two valve springs, seals, retainers, and everything all installed. So you can give it a little tap. Make sure he's nice and seated. Then go on to the next one. All right, so we got all the valve springs and everything on on this side. Now we're gonna get the we're gonna use our original rocker stand. Put that guy in there, and then we upgraded our push rods. So, I was trying to run away. So this is the original one, is a three piece. These ends are just pressed in, and it's a thinner wall. So we got the comp cams that, um, it's the same length. Can't get it out of the bag. Hardest thing about putting the engine together. <laughs> but it's a one piece and it's a thicker wall. It's 80 thousandths wall thickness instead of this little, which I don't know how thick it is, but it's super thin. But it's one piece. So now we're going to put the push rods in, but you need to, you always want to make sure that the holes are clear. You want to clear out the holes. Because I've had these before that they get the oil and stuff in there for machining them and they plug the holes. So before you put them in, you want to blow through all the holes, spray cleaner, that the straw is about the size of the hole and blow through every one of them to make sure that they, none of them are plugged, they all cleared out. And then once you do that, then blow them out or you just let them dry because the brake cleaner will evaporate. Just make sure you blow Blows them all out and dries it off at the same time. And you know, you're gonna get oil to your rockers and your top end. And we just take our same assembly lube and you can just uh, dip the, do the port or dip it, you can just dip it, gets it on the end, slide it down the lifter. And then you wanna push it down because the lifter's once, once it, the load pushes the lifter up, the, got, the lifter holders hold the lifter up so you push them back down to the camshaft. And once you have them all in, you can just lube the top of the valves and the top of the push rod. It's not gonna hurt it to over oil it, that's for sure. A little bit more on the valve spring is good to lube the valve spring because the oil lubes the valve spring, and that's what keeps it cool. Because if you overheat a valve spring by lack of oil, that'll break it. If you break a valve spring, you drop a valve, it goes from bad to worse. So a little extra lube on the valve springs is good on a dry startup. So then you take the rockers that we did our trunnion upgrade in. And then the flat spot, see the flat spot goes to the top. See so if you have the trunnion upside down, it's rounded. Just make sure that the flat spot is to the top. So offset, offset, straight, offset. And then the trunnion upgrade came with the. Uh, almost sound like that wrapper. Came offset. With, uh, offset. Uh, <laughs> they came with uh, new bolts. You have, so no, you have no idea which wrapper I'm talking about, do you? Not a clue. So. Uh, you're not gonna use the factory bolts they come with the new new Allens. Kinda gotta get everything lined up because it's all trying to fall down. Oh, never mind, I already Just did like it. that. You see that these little half pipes, that's what centers a rocker. The radius of the trunnion. So that's what keeps this, this stand is what centers the rocker and, and keeps it straight. What if the rocker started rocking back and forth rather than staying straight? 
then it could pop off of the valve or it could hit the side and knock the locks out. And once you get them snug down, it's a good idea to rotate the engine around. It kind of helps center everything before you torque it. Now we're going to put a little bit of lube in the trunnion before we rotate it. So just going to pour some in there. That's not satisfying. I don't know what is. You're telling me. Now we're going to rotate it over. Make sure everything is all nice and centered. So now we're going to go ahead and torque them. And these bolts, you get torqued to 22 foot-pounds. There you go, one side's done. Time to put the valve cover on there. So we just got a factory valve cover gasket. Got the valve covers cleaned up. Turned out pretty good. We got a factory gasket. Then I just got brand new valve cover bolts because it's the only way to get the grommets in the factory world, I should say. Probably get them after market by themselves, but. If you want to torque these, these would be like 89 inch pounds. I'm just gonna run them down by hand. There you go. One side's finished up. Time to get on to the other side. All right. That's it for the other side. Got it all set up. We're gonna get the valve cover on this thing. Get this thing finished up for today. All right. Both sides are done. Got the new push rods. Trunnion upgrade in the stock rockers. Valve springs. Retainers locks. Valve seals. This thing's gonna be bad. Well, while the master mechanic puts on this here alternator for the LS3 engine, I just wanna talk about what we're gonna be doing for the next video coming up here on Friday. So we are gonna be taking out the exhaust, but we're gonna be keeping the mufflers on the exhaust, but we obviously need to get it out because the configuration for it is not good right now. And we also need to take off the piece of crap rear coilover shocks because it's, that's what's making this thing sit like a truck right now. It's sitting way too high for what we need it to be sitting. And the third thing we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be taking off the front core support that is attached to the suspension that we took off the old suspension that we're not gonna be using anymore because you know we're gonna need that for miscellaneous stuff down the road when we bolt on the inner fenders, the headlights, all sorts of other stuff. So just stay tuned for that. Coming up, up after the Nova, we got um, a lot of stuff planned for my truck. The 68 truck that we made the very first video on, we haven't touched it since. So we got that plan coming up and that's all I got to say. If you guys aren't subscribed yet to the channel and you enjoy these videos, don't forget. Just right down there. It takes two seconds. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you guys next time.